and welcome back to another communion. We're going to read again from Galatians 1, but a bit further down from verse 18 to 24. And it says, Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, remained with him 15 days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Now concerning the things which I write to you, indeed before God, I do not lie. Afterward, I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. Yeah. And I was unknown by face to the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they were hearing only, He who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy, and they glorified God in me. Wonderful. Again, this is the first chapter of the book of Galatians. Yesterday, we looked at the idea that Paul, the Apostle Paul, who was Saul, said he was set apart from his mother's womb. Now this bit is after he was in Damascus and he came to Christ through that miraculous uh, Saul of Damas Damascus experience, fell off his horse, he was blinded, he went in and Ananias prayed for him. And we know the story and he talks about how it, the impact it had on him on several occasions when he rehearses that before groups of people. But here, right into the church of Galatia, he says, uh, you know, after, Dam sorry, after Damascus, he went to Jerusalem and they then, because people were going to, try and kill him they were upset with him they sent him home to Tarsus for a period of time it says there he was three years then he came back to Jerusalem but he says I saw no one but Peter and then James the brother of, of Jesus and then he talks about the churches and he saw none of the churches saw him by name and I I laughed when I read it this morning I thought wow isn't that strange here is the greatest missionary evangelist that we would know who wrote the majority of the letters in the New Testament and yet when he went to Jerusalem there's Peter didn't introduce him to any of the apostles. He's there for 15 days. Why didn't he go on Facebook or take up his phone and say, hey guys, we're gonna have a party at our house tonight. I want to introduce you this guy, <clears throat> Paul, who God, God has called in an amazing way to reach the Gentiles. Come on, we'll have some fun. We'll find out all about him. Didn't say a thing, nothing to them. So he met none of them apart from Peter and from James. And then it talks about the churches. Didn't open up any church for him. Didn't organize any meetings for him. I thought, flip it, heck, what's that all about? <laughs> and yet there he goes, the greatest apostle is, it just shows us something amazing. Listen, what does that say to us? Listen, I bet, I bet there are times you've been offended by people. I have, and we don't take offense, of course. Not that any of us ever do that. But if you ever were offended or people have let you down in the church, it's going to happen again and again. And I laughed when I read it this morning. I thought, poor Paul, he can't even get a place to preach. They won't even open up the pulpit for him, even though he's going to write the whole New Testament. Oh, well, there you go, or the majority of it. But listen, it's a wonderful testimony about how God uses this man in an amazing way. And I want to tell you today that people will let us down. They'll let you down. You might even be disappointed today. Maybe this is a word for you today. Maybe somebody's rubbed you up the wrong way. Maybe you received a letter that you were surprised about or a phone call. You thought, oh, I'll get an email. And the trouble with emails or with, with messages over the phone, we don't know the motive behind them because we can't hear the voice. Maybe somebody's let you die. And if it hasn't, cheer up, it might happen tomorrow. But listen to me, there is one who will never let us down. And that's why we celebrate him. Jesus will never let you down. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, we all know people like that, don't we? You heard miserable old tykes who are the same yesterday, today, and the Lord. No, but Jesus isn't like that. He is fantastic, and he loves us, gives his life for us, gave his life for us once and for all, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we're going to celebrate communion together. So Jemima's going to read from the Gospel of Mark. It's time I stopped talking, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, okay, get the Mark. Okay. So we're going to read Mark 14, verse 22 to 26. Then and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. 
Wonderful. And as we take bread today, if you need to pause the video, do to get yourself ready. But we're taking bread many times. We've been doing this every day for how long now? But it's wonderful because, as I said the other day, we're setting the Lord before us. And he's our example. People will let us down. Churches will let us down. We let churches down. People have often said, if you want the perfect church, don't join it. Because when but you joined it, it's not going to be perfect anymore. That's the way it is. We carry things with us, don't we? But Jesus was perfect. Perfect man, perfect God. And today, as we break the bread and just thank him that he loves us, let's eat together and celebrate him today in Jesus' name. Then we take the cup, cup of the new covenant. And Jesus has given everything for us. And as we set this before us, set him before us, we remember all that he did. He gave his life for us. He became poor so that we could become rich. He took everything. He took sin upon him. He, him who had no sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. So today you and I don't deserve anything. But by his grace, he gives us everything we need. So let's drink together. Amen. Let's pray together that God will bless you today and be with you. Father, I pray for each one of our friends, our brothers and sisters in different parts of the world, that you will bless them today. And if any have been offended or hurt, even through this lockdown and through the coronavirus thing, for our folk in America, many are offended through this whole uh, election process that's going on. I pray for protection for them, please. Help us to guard our hearts, Lord so that people won't upset us, so we won't get offended. Help us to have an open heart to everybody, whatever stripe or religion or, or thinking that they have. Lord, you loved people for, whom they, for who they were, and we pray that we will love, that you would love through us, each one. Bless our friends, bless those who are on their own today, those who are suffering, those who are struggling, the ones we're praying for who need a touch from you especially. Lord, just bless them. We continue to pray for baby Oscar and those other folk day by day and pray you continue to do a miracle in each life we pray in Jesus name amen so God bless you and we'll see you again tomorrow <laughs>